Good morning. <laughs> so, okay, so the first thing I'm going to say, if you, if you saw my surprise look, is, is that we've been sitting here counting down, waiting for this event to start. So, first of all, good morning and welcome to SportWorks uh, Talks. Uh, with me today is Thomas Juno from UEFA Academy, and uh, we're glad, glad to be on air. Uh, we have a few nervous minutes there as we sit there and count down the clock uh, as we waited to launch. So, apologies if we uh, keep, to keep you waiting. Uh, um, Really grateful to have you all with us. Uh, as always, it's great to be having another talk in, in the house this morning uh, here at SportWorks in uh, the MSI in Lausanne. Um, I want to say a few little bit of housekeeping. As always, we're going to be doing about a 20 minute presentation, 20, 25 minute presentation. And then uh, we're going to do some Q&A chat at the end uh, for any questions you have, which I'm sure you'll get from, uh, from uh, Thomas's uh, presentation this morning. Um, that's it from me. I'm going to hand over to Thomas and uh, let him do the, do the introduction and talk about his presentation today. Well, Great to have you. Thanks. Thank you, Christian. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice, to, uh, nice to meet you. Uh, and uh, what do we start the, yeah. the presentation? <laughs> because I have some uh, I have some slides for you. But uh, basically, what I'm going to present today is uh, is a journey. I want to invite you in a in a journey, a 16 years journey uh, at UEFA about uh, UEFA uh, services, education services that we are providing to our member association. So uh, let's start. Uh, let's start with this. So I'm sure when you think about UEFA, uh, one of the things which pop in your mind is, is pictures like this, not necessarily these players, not necessarily uh, this team, but we are famous for competition, being the Champions League, the Euro, the women's competition. Uh, I'm sure when you hear about UEFA, you think about the competition. However, we are a confederation, and I would argue that our primary role, even before uh, the competition, is the protection, the promotion, and the development of our sport, the beautiful sport of, uh, of football. And we do it mainly in supporting our member association with a lot of services, in empowering this member association, 55 member association in Europe. And we do it in providing them with different services, different, uh, different programs. The, the main programs we have is called the Hattrick program, is a little bit of Olympic solidarity, if you want. Uh, this is basically a program with which we redistribute the revenues coming from our national team competition to the 55 member association, mostly to allow them to develop the services and their infrastructures. But from the very beginning, this program is now 16 years old. From the very beginning, we have actually not only invest in infrastructure of the federation, but also in the people. Uh, and this is why it's called Hattrick for infrastructures, knowledge sharing and education. So now I have the very difficult task to sum up, to synthesize this journey in terms of knowledge sharing and education, which started 16 years ago in, let's say, 25 minutes, right? But I have a big advantage because I've been part of this adventure for the last 13 years. So I'm well positioned to, to tell you a little bit how the things develop. So let me tell you about this story. And this is a nice story because it started with a kiss, uh, maybe not such a beautiful kiss as, as this famous one from, from Mr. Duano. Uh, this is more the look of our first kiss at, uh, at uh, UEFA. Our kiss was an acronym standing from Knowledge Information Sharing Scenario. And this was basically a series of workshops, of seminar, not webinars. At the time, we could still meet you know, physically. And uh, we were inviting, we were gathering specialists of our different member associations to talk about the topic. Uh, so, for instance, we had communication specialists or uh, CSR specialists gathering in Neon or actually across Europe, uh, and they were exchanging uh, best practices. So this was very useful because it was not only connecting, you know, top management, but also middle management and also encouraging really sharing of best practices uh, across of, uh, of 55 Federation. This was a very successful program, and UEFA ran over 120 such uh, KISS workshops. Uh, and basically, my colleague at the time had a very good idea. We captured everything. We record all the seminars, so you can see that we had cameraman in the room. We tried to hide them behind bushes or behind plants, but still, everything which was said in the room was captured. Right, and uh, this basically allow us to sit after a few, uh, you know, a few months and a few years on a golden mine 
or on, because I love Lego, on a lot of bricks of Lego bricks. And the good stuff with Lego bricks is that you can assemble them in different ways. And this is exactly what we did. So the first way we assemble all these Legos is that we put it on an online platform called Kiss Online. And here I want to reassure you, or maybe to disappoint you, this is not the ancestor of Tinder or all uh, dating uh, app solution, no. Uh, this is still a, an appealing and sexy platform. I hope you, you agree with this. But this is a knowledge sharing platform, basically to share you know, uh, knowledge with our member association. It has changed name over time. It's called UEFA Play. But basically, the principle is still the same. We have assembled all these bricks, all this content we've uh, recorded you know, during these uh, webinars, all the documents we were shared. Of course, over the years, we have added some extra material to this platform. But the idea is that the member association, the, the employees of four member association, can still access this content online. What we did also, remember, bricks, you can assemble them in different uh, ways, is that we have starting to draw scenarios uh, with the bricks and to build not only just a platform where you can find everything online, but to try to, to tell a story with these bricks. And this is what we did in launching our first education proper, I would say education program, which was called and is still called CFM, Certificate in Football Management. This program still exists today. Of course, again, it, have, it has evolved over time. But the idea is that uh, the program is a blended learning program with six uh, online modules. And uh, the idea of this program is to provide a 360 degrees understanding of the functioning of a football organization. And uh, we do it in partnership with uh, academics, but this is really a program which is very practical because it's based on the content we have recorded during this uh, again, this KISS workshops and, of course, which has been updated across uh, across the time. It's a very successful program. Uh, this was launched for the first time in 2010. We're 10 years later, and as you can see, we have run nearly 40 editions of this program, 39 editions. Uh, and I would say nowadays, if you work in European football, there is a good chance you have did, uh, done the CFM because we have uh, 1,422 graduates and we have still ongoing edition at the moment. We have currently seven edition uh, of the CFM which are, uh, which are ongoing. Uh, I don't know if they are online, but if you took part to the very first uh, CFM, this is a picture taken from the very, very first face-to-face -face seminar of this blended learning program in Neon in 2010. So some people might recognize them in, the, in these pictures. Because the program was successful and because we still had many bricks available, we decided to launch a second program. We were very creative. So after the CFM, we launched the DFM. And you can see our vintage logo here. But vintage is, is again fashionable. So I hope you, you like them. Uh, and D was standing for diploma. OK, so this is now also with time. This program gained a letter. It's now called DFLM for Diploma in Football Leadership and Management. And this program is for people maybe a little bit more advanced in their career when you manage teams, where you can manage uh, high level budget, complex project. And we really insist on leadership uh, skills. Still around the same period, we launched a third program, which was a little bit more autonomous in comparison to the, the other. This uh, was called the Executive Master in European Sport Governance, the MESGO. The program now is still called MESGO, but it has changed. It's not European anymore. It's global sport governance. And actually, it's truly global because here it's purely face-to-face. -face, and we go really to visit sports organizations around the world. So we have a session in, in Asia and in North America as well uh, in, this, in this program, which is really targeting here uh, I would say uh, CEO, president, and general secretaries of sports organization. Uh, one of the specificity of this program is not that there are a lot of uh, academic partners, but there is also a lot of uh, sports partners. Uh, and UEFA is, partnership, is partnering here with EHF, with IIHF, with FIBA, and recently with the Council of Europe to really try to make a program which goes far beyond uh, the world of football and which is appealing for all, uh, let's say, leaders of, of, of sport. So again, at the very beginning of this journey, this was a plate, let's say, of education specialists at UEFA. Uh, after just a few years, we launched this new uh, programs. And over the time, because the programs were successful, because the demand was huge uh, in terms of, of, of federation, we launched additional programs to the point that our plate became very full. And I don't know if you are like me, but I love spaghetti carbonara. It's probably my favorite pasta uh, dish. But spaghetti is usually a little bit messy, 
right? And uh, this was a little bit the feeling we started to have with all these programs at UEFA. It was becoming difficult for me and my colleagues to explain internally at UEFA why we needed so many programs. Uh, uh, while the federation were still asking for more. Uh, at the same time, some federation were starting to ask, okay, I don't really understand the difference between all these programs. And even for us, because we like these acronyms, we started to, to get a bit lost uh, across all, uh, all this uh, acronym. So what we did, we actually uh, shifted uh, from a very nice and appealing Carbonara uh, dish into a business school catalog. So this is what we did. Uh, and this is a result basically of, uh, of our work. Uh, this is actually the most updated version of our catalog. And all our initiatives are currently divided in five different pillars. So you still have the program I presented a few minutes ago uh, in the first pillar, which are the overall management program. We have developed also with the support of other, um, other uh, units at UEFA, program for specialists. So we have a program for, for instance, uh, a legal program. We have a program for football doctors, a program for CSR specialists, and so forth and so on. Uh, then we have uh, an education pillar, which is quite interesting, which is about players' education. We try to encourage successful players who had a career on the pitch to transition and have a second career in football, but in football administration. And, and we've been very successful with this. And we still have a pillar about knowledge sharing and research. And a, a, a last one that we're developing uh, very fast because we have many demands. We can also build on-demand programs for football organization, but we're also working more and more with all kinds of organization uh, associated to, uh, to sport. So once we did it, we thought we, we were you know, quite uh, advanced, already better than our spaghetti carbonara uh, dish. Uh, but we were a little bit missing a, a name or a, or a concept. And the decision was taken to go one step further, so not to only have a catalog, but to create a unit within UEFA to really you know, promote this program and to, to make this program more visible, more accessible. And this is what we did in launching one year ago, the UEFA Academy. It was a, a project which was approved by the Exco of UEFA in, in Rome in February 2019. So it's a little bit more than, than one year now. And here we are. And I think the creation of the unit was really, I mean, uh, a way to change the mindset also in the way we were approaching our programs. And the main shift I would say was about becoming more accessible. It's not only becoming more visible with our own communication channel or catalog or online uh, website or a uh, LinkedIn channel, but it was also becoming more open. And uh, you might know that openness is one of the four key values of UEFA. Maybe I will uh, learn you something is that actually if the A of UEFA is a little bit open here is all our value are actually represented in, in our logo. So the A is open for openness. But at our level, I must admit that the education unit uh, one of our favorite words, unfortunately, was no, <laughs> which is not a very open, uh, open word. Why, why do I say this? A little bit like a, like a joke. Uh, all programs except the MESGO were only accessible by member of our association. So if you were an employee of our member association, you could take part of the programs. But if you were working for a club or for another stakeholders, you could not necessarily access our programs. So. We had a lot of requests, this part of it. People finding out about our programs. We had more and more graduates, so they were asking, oh, I heard about the CFM, I heard about the DFLM. How can I register it? We said, no, sorry, it's not possible. It's, it's only for a member association. And we have many requests like this. And we thought, OK, there might be a demand. And what is the mission of UEFA is to grow our sports, of course, starting with our member association, but to, you know, to contribute to the development of football and, and sport in general. So we changed the mindset and we said, no, we're going from being kind of closed and, and exclusive to programs open to all. It's still exclusive because, believe me, it's quite difficult to get a seat in our programs. We have a lot of demand. But now we have actually inviting all the different stakeholders to be part of our programs. And the consequence of this is that our program is just better because the quality of the discussion is enriched by the you know the the involvement of all the stakeholders in, in our program. So this is certainly a way we will go uh, still uh, still further with this. When we launched one year ago, again, this UEFA Academy, of course, we went through a, uh, a whole process of how we positioned the units, 
the services. So for instance, we define our purpose as to lead and inspire the education of individuals and organization to continuously elevate the, the game of football. But I would say more importantly, we decided about our value and, and the value we really want to stick to it and which explain I would say the success we have had not only since one year, but also before. Expertise, for sure, is the first value. Uh, we have an immense privilege. We are fully part of UEFA. The UEFA Academy is fully embedded into, uh, into UEFA. So we have access to 66 years of experience and all the amazing network and expertise uh, built uh, by, by UEFA. What I have to say is that we add to this expertise uh, also the expertise of academics and really forward thinking academic because we believe that you know the complexity of our work sometimes can be better explained by uh, by models so our programs are very uh, I would say practically based and and again enriched by all this experience of, of UEFA but we we need also the academics to challenge us to bring this critical eye and when you do a program of the UEFA Academy and when you are graduates uh, of the UEFA Academy you do not and you receive a nice certificate signed by, by UEFA. You also receive a real academic certificate worth uh, ECTS credits. So I think this is a, a really important point uh, which, uh, which we provide. The second value uh, we have is uh, community. Uh, again, the academy is quite young, but we are starting a long time ago. And now, and even excluding the, the, the KISS uh, seminars at the beginning, we have over 2,000 graduates of our program. So people really will pass an exam at the end of the programs and have one of these uh, diploma uh, of, uh, of the academy. And this creates, of course, uh, an impressive network of working professionals. And this is also a distinction here I would like to do. UEFA is not there to, you know, to compete with, uh, with anyone. We do it because we, we believe that you know, education is needed in sports, that, that people uh, embarking in, in, a, in a sports organization need further development in their journey. But we only address our target groups is exclusively people already working in organizations. So when you are in a, in a course of the UEFA Academy, you are only with working professionals, which allow, again, some high quality, uh, high quality discussion. Finally, uh, and I think this has been really the core value which allow us to have this, this growth and, and this success is really that we are commit, committed to relentless uh, improvement. It's not necessarily if you're partnering with the UEFA Academy as a, as a service provider, easy to work with us because we are extremely uh, you know, demandful, but because we apply the same for us. There is not one single seminar or single workshops that we do not debrief and that we, we try to see, okay, what worked well, but what could be improved for next time. And I think thanks to this value, we, we, we really have no excellent product, I would say, to, uh, to, to provide to people. Uh, and I have to say that's the same for the whole UEFA. One of the other key value of UEFA is excellence. I think, you know, the Champions League, it would not be there without this, you know, like excellence as a, as a driver. And there is no other reason than, you know, if, if UEFA is great in delivering competition, we have to be great in delivering also educational uh, services for sure. UEFA Academy in, in numbers, maybe just here, I, I would like to insist on the fact that uh, our expertise and, and our graduates is, is by far beyond Europe. Uh, we have over 120 nationalities, no uh, part of our graduates. And we have also visited with our program physically uh, 48 uh, countries so far. So uh, again, uh, I think this, uh, this demonstrates as a scope, the reach of the UEFA Academy goes also uh, outside Europe. Uh, other interesting statistics. This is the number of events, of uh, seminars we delivered uh, over the, the current season, which just end in, in, in three days. So we will not grow up uh, uh, for the next two, two days. 51 events over 120 events a day. This is actually quite a lot, but this is less than the previous season. And why is it less? Because, <laughs> because of the COVID. And of course, I need to, to speak a little bit about the impact on COVID on, on our activities. Uh, of course, we had to postpone a few trainings. Uh, a few tra trainings will start a little bit later than expected. But of course, we could not stop also completely our activities for, uh, for a year or, or some months, right? So we have started to move some of our face-to-face -face seminar online. And uh, believe me, it was a challenge for us. We are uh, 
very experimented, I would say, in building uh, appealing online uh, modules, but this is asynchronous uh, education. But to reproduce what we were able to do, you know, in a classroom online, this is another challenge. And here I need to be, uh, <laughs> to be a little bit humble here. We, we were complete beginners. Uh, so we, we, if we pretend to be uh, L&D professionals, I think this is a key component we need to master. And of course, because of this continuous improvement mentality, I think, no, we are really getting good in doing this. And, and I'm very confident that, you know, the next one will be, will be even better. Uh, but for me, I mean, in every crisis, right, there is an opportunity. Uh, and I think here for us, uh, the real opportunity was to discover this other, uh, other piece of our work as L&D professionals, to really master online programs and also to understand all the opportunities. Uh, and in the future, you can expect to still see programs deliver online or partly online. We're not going to move, you know, transform all our programs to bring them online. That's not what I'm saying, but there is a lot of opportunities also in teaching online because you can do great stuff you cannot do in face-to-face. -face. So for sure, we, we are going to add additional bricks skills uh, to what where our program was already successful, but to build even better programs in the future and to use really this opportunity of, of teaching online in, in, in the future. So I'm nearly at the end of this presentation, but I would like to, to give you, I don't know if it's a gift, maybe it's a big word, but uh, at least two announcements that I didn't do anywhere else before, right? So the first one is more for graduates or future graduates. We're going to launch the UEFA Academy uh, alumni in a, few, uh, in a few weeks, actually. This will be an additional services that we want to offer to all our graduates. Remember, 2,000 graduates already. Uh, they, were, or they were already alumni for some of our programs, um, but we want to offer an overarching alumni to really also encourage dialogue between the programs and to offer additional services also when you leave the UEFA Academy with your, with your diploma. The second announcement is maybe even more relevant, I would say, for the audience, because it will be for everyone, not only for people who already engage with the uh, with UEFA Academy, is the launch of UEFA Academy Online. What it is, is nothing new. <laughs> it's actually what was called before uh, KISS Online, uh, and now currently UEFA Play, is, again, in a story, it's always good to, you know, to finish with a start, right? Uh, it's it's our knowledge sharing platform. But the big difference now, it's not only the new name, is that it will be open to everyone. Uh, so you will be able to access all this database simply in connecting to uh, uefaacademy.com. Uh, and uh, again, I think this is part of our commitment to, to grow the game of football and to grow sport, to put this database available for, for uh, everyone. So this will be launched in about one or two months, depending uh, the last step of, of this ambitious project. Very last, uh, very last slide here. I usually like to finish my talk with, uh, you know, the, the, the key takeaway because I didn't really know who would be online or in the room because we have also a small audience here. Um, I, I divided in three. I was thinking, okay, who could be interested in, in having me, you know, talking for, for a while? So because of course uh, we do education, I was thinking maybe there is education uh, specialist here. Uh, and here my message for, for you guys would be, always to try to think what is your added value for your organization or your ecosystem. And this took me a few, uh, a few years, I think, to realize. You know, you start, you are very enthusiastic about education, and, but just doing education for education is not, is not enough. You need, as an L&D professional, to demonstrate what is the value for your company, for your organization, for your industry. So, of course, we have no accumulated this experience, and I would be very happy to, to talk also with, uh, with other LND specialists about, about this, and why not to, to provide them uh, with some, uh, some advice and do and dance on, on this. UEFA Academy, uh, we have also a long-term commitment with academics. I mentioned their, their key role in delivering our programs together with our own experts. But something I didn't mention in this, uh, in this uh, webinar is that we also have a research grants program. Uh, have a look on our website, but basically it's a scheme to encourage additional research uh, in, uh, in football. And finally, I think most uh, of you are working professionally in sport. And I hope this presentation, this was not my intention at least, was not looking like a selling uh, pitch. But I still am uh, convinced that because of the richness of our catalog, 
I'm pretty sure that there is a program for you in our, in our catalog. And if it's not the case, as I was uh, mentioning before, we are more and more developing tailor-made programs for, for other organizations, football first, but also other sports and even some other uh, companies are now approaching us and we're uh, developing more and more this kind of partnerships and tailor-made programs. So that's it for me. Uh, I know you're going to challenge me with some questions, at least I hope. But if you want also to continue this conversation after it, uh, we have obviously a website, uh, but uh, we have also quite a, an active LinkedIn channel. So I encourage you to, to follow us uh, and also to, to send us email to contact us uh, via phone. So thank you very much. And I think Christine, you will join me for, for leading the Q&A. Great. Um, what a... Uh, Perfect presentation, um, and I want to say thank you um, to coming in and sharing with us. I think the, the message is very clear. I'm just going to get someone to adjust the camera so we're just a little bit. So we're both in shot. We're okay, not too, we're, we're socially come, distant. Come, come, there we go. Come, yeah. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so I just want to say thank you. Um, and to your point I, about this not being a sales pitch, uh, to me that is, it wasn't at all. Um, it was great to hear. Um, what I want to reinforce is that where education and knowledge programs are essential for our industry. And I feel it's great leadership that UEFA is playing in this space. And I'm thrilled to hear that you're opening up to everybody. I think this is a, this is a, a great step because, in my opinion, I think that the, the opportunities for us to develop as sports professionals is challenging. Uh, we're obviously very focused on delivering our events and very focused on our sports. Uh, so I'm thrilled to hear that there's opportunities for, for, for what UEFA is offering. Um, and I do, I'm a huge believer in knowledge sharing. So the concept of opening up your knowledge platform is, is, is uh, great news. And uh, I'll, I'll certainly be digging in there as well. Uh, <laughs> so it's great. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to pop into the chat. I'm sure we've got some questions in here. Um, so thank you for everybody. Great to see everybody joining from around the world. Um, amazing. Uh, you talk about the reach as well. We're, I think we're re reaching into 43 different countries now. Right, okay, apologies. That was me hitting the wrong button. We talk about technology and we're learning. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna really- And you're the committed uh, technologist. Yeah, look, and I'm the total, <laughs> and, and I am learning every day, every day I am learning more and more, especially about doing webinars. I, I talk about doing technology for major events. Like, to be honest, it's quite easy. Bolting together webinars, my gosh, I didn't realize it was so much to it. Um, but, uh, so thank you for your, for your kind understanding, um, yourself included. Um, but I think, yeah, it's great to have all these questions. Now I'm just going to pop into the chat. Oh, and we've dropped the chat as well because I've lost the, the questions. So if we can have, drop them in there, that'd be great. Thanks, someone's going to bring me over. There's the advantage of having a live audience. <laughs> this is brilliant. We did the, the Thank presentation. You. Thank right. you. Thank you. Team, uh, team efforts. Very okay. Good. I'm going to jump into the question. So there's a great question here from Omar. Um, what is the average age range participating in UEFA specialist uh, programs? Okay, uh, great question. Uh, I think it really depends on the program. Uh, if we talk about the program for specialists, the goal is really to have specialists. So again, if we speak about we were launching a new program for communication specialists, the goal is not to to train junior people. There are other uh, schools and other people doing this. It's really to talk, to have an informed programs about among specialists. So usually I would say it's people, uh, I don't know, around a little bit younger than me maybe, it's, uh, to 35, from 35 to, to 50, 60. Uh, and uh, maybe the CFM is slightly younger uh, audience. Also the CFM, also one of the great assets of the CFM is also to recognize people who have been in this industry for a long, uh, long, long period, but who don't necessarily have, you know, formal qualification or formal recognition of, uh, so it's very difficult to answer these questions, but uh, I would say it ranged from 25 years for the really youngest uh, people to, to people about to retire because it's never too late to, to learn, right? Absolutely. 
that's that's great. I think it's and it's nice to hear that it is the whole range. Um, and it's never too late to learn to hear that you've got you know people up in the sixties complete, complete con contributing. Okay, so do you? It's a question here from Amel. Hi, Amel. Do you involve your wafer staff to do testimonials at these courses according to their experience, if uh, relevant? With yes, the of course. This this was what I was mentioning before. I mean, uh, we are completely embedded into UEFA, and this is a huge uh, advantage. Uh, of course, I mean, people who register to our programs also expect to learn uh, things from UEFA, but we always try also to challenge ourselves. So we do not pretend, you know. I do believe that uh, what we do at UEFA is, is amazing, but of course there are also a lot of other actors doing amazing uh, events, amazing programs, sometimes better than us in some uh, in some parts. So we have also a lot of guests coming from uh, the football industry, the sports industry. We have also a lot of uh, external experts and of course the academics. So, but of course there are uh, regularly uh, people, specialists of UEFA coming and talking in our programs and vice versa. What is also great is that more and more people from UEFA also uh, are registering to our program. So you have also, you know, you benefit from, from uh, uh, programs like us, not only because of the speakers, but also because of the other speak, uh, people in the room. And uh, we try also to, uh, to, to encourage this knowledge sharing with, within education program. And this is, uh, this is a great asset. We've had some great conversations with different people about the opportunities to learn from other industries. The question for me probably is, mm -hmm. do you see opportunities from taking what you're, you're learning from sport or teaching in sport to other industries? Because I think there's, like you say, different sports we can learn from each other, and I think that's fantastic you've opened it up. But do you see there's opportunities to potentially in the future to open up to other industries? Yeah, well, we, we just launched this academy one year ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do is maybe a bit the opposite. So we, we invite a lot of people from other industry in our, in our program. For, so for instance, in, in the MESGO, this was a program known for it. Of course, we talk about sports governance, yeah. but we invite a lot of governance specialists or specialists from other you know, uh, industry. Uh, but um, of course, I mean, uh, at the moment I was saying our target audience is really people working in sports. So it's not people who wish to join a sport organization. It's already people already in the, let's say, in the business. Uh, but we had already a few conversations with companies, I would say, close to sport. We would like that we provide uh, education program for, for them. Uh, so let's say we're on this road, but maybe not completely uh, yet. Well, it's great. A great opportunity to learn from other industries. I think it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful to hear that you're engaged in it. So I'm going to jump into a question here from uh, Peter. Thank you, Thomas, and the Sportworks team. Thank you. Pleasure uh, to have you on us, uh, with us. Uh, through the opening uh, up of the courses also outside Europe, another value added might be to have presenters, academics from the US, Asia, et cetera, attending. And the online visual tools might facilitate such entries from abroad. Is, is that possible going forward? Well, exactly. Uh, at the moment, we, we, uh, when we were completely uh, you know, face-to-face, uh, -face, we already had actually uh, uh, in our specialists coming people from overseas uh, in, in our programs, not only participants, but also speakers. But when I was thinking about, you know, making our programs even better, of course, in the future, I think now that everybody saw that, you know, online technology is kind of working, uh, <laughs> uh, we will be able to, to also maybe have more even uh, speakers and testimonials from, you know, people that necessarily will not move for just a 30 minutes presentation, but join us online for, for you know, 20 minutes uh, Q&A or whatever. So definitely something we will explore in the, in the future and, and use. Yes. Great, great question, thanks. So a question here from uh, Michelle. Um, thanks for your question, Michelle. So apart from the different courses, programs, and edu educational methodology, what other initiatives and activities does the UEFA Academy offer for the students, uh, football players and participants to develop their practical and professional skills and knowledge related to the labor market? Yeah, so let's say, for instance, for uh, football players, this is one of our key pillars, as you have seen, one of our uh, five, uh, five pillars. Uh, we have this UFI MIP, which is, let's say, a very classical uh, program, so a little bit like the MESGO for former football players. Uh, but we have also more knowledge sharing activities and uh, I would say uh, educational tool. Actually, in a previous webinar, my colleague Antoine Fournier yes. came and presented, so I'm sure we can find his presentation uh, online. But this is, for instance, a digital app we have launched to uh, encourage you know players to to start thinking about these questions even at a, a, an early year, uh, early age in in in, in their career. Uh, 
The other kind of initiatives we have, which goes beyond the traditional, let's say, education, is soon the soon-to-be uh, UEFA Academy Online. We have also uh, a manual. Uh, we have a toolbox also with, uh, I don't remember the number of tools, but uh, more than 100 different very management tools that you know can be applied by any sports organization. So we try also to produce material and share this material with, uh, with everyone interested to, to improve, basically, the way they manage their sports organization. Great. Okay. Well, that um, and yes, the the uh, presentation from Antoine is available on sportworker.com. I will put that in the links afterwards. Great. So, and it is a really good, interesting uh, application that's been developed. It's really, really good presentation. Uh, so, a question here from Manuela: uh, What are the skills professionals in sport still need to develop in general, in your opinion? Well, that's the, that's a good question. It's a good question. Uh, I would say, you know, I'm someone very curious, and and I think sometimes uh, the the sports sectors, but it's less the case nowadays because of the great initiatives, including at UEFA with the Innovation Lab and this kind of things. But for a, for a time, I think sports was really, uh, you know, looking a little bit uh, among among itself, uh, and I think education and knowledge sharing is should not be only to refer to one of your questions among the specialists of the sport industry, but uh, but broaden. So maybe curiosity, uh, innovation, and current crisis like we, we have faced currently, demonstrate also the needs to, to basically uh, be ready for innovation and, and to, to have the right mindset. So I think it's more a question of mindsets rather than, than skills, really. And it's interesting, when you discuss innovation, one of the things that I always catch people, and, I would, and I'm a technologist, so I always think of technology as being innovation, but innovation is quite a broad topic. It, it's not, it's innovative thinking, was someone reminded me recently, is an important aspect of innovation. And is that something you find as well within the academy? Yeah, I definitely agree with you that uh, when you think about innovation, you, th you immediately think about technology. Of course, technology helps you to, you know, achieve new things which were not Great possible. Before, but innovation is a mindset, right? And this is this mindset we we try to cultivate with our innovation hub and with the uh, with our education program. Okay, great. Um, so, question here from Leila. Uh, so, which requirements do you have for the candidates for a doctor's education program? Well, uh, for all programs, uh, it all depends on the program, <laughs> but uh, you need to work in the sport industry. Uh, you need to work uh, for some of them in football or be connected to football or at least be a specialist in the sport industry. This is a requirement. Then, of course, it depends. I mean, the MES goal will be for more experienced people. So here we are, you are adding uh, years of experience in leadership position. If you want to apply for a program for specialists, you need to work already in this in this field of specialization. So okay. it's, it really depends on programs, but everything is explained on our website. Interesting. All right, so I've got one more time for one more question. Um, I've got one here from Tanis. Uh, very interesting presentation. Uh, what are the types of academia research and collaboration projects that UEFA Academy is doing now in 2020? Well, I can speak a little bit about the, what we did uh, recently. So for instance, UEFA has a new uh, women's football strategy. So mm -hmm. here we, we provided, you know, it's, it's great always to build a strategy, but based on research and on, on facts. So uh, for all this initiative to, you know, to try to demonstrate that football is helping, for instance, uh, girls and women to, to gain confidence, mm -hmm. especially at a teenage age. So this is all research based. So okay. you, we don't want only to claim things that football is great. We want to, to prove it. Another uh, great initiative, actually not really done by the academy, but in partnership with, is this uh, social uh, return on investment model where we can now demonstrate in a, in a country like Romania uh, or Sweden, if you put one euro in football, how much basically it contributes to, uh, to, to the society actually. And this is something we've been working with, with our colleague from, uh, from the Grow team uh, to, to, to have something really solid, not you know, just throwing figures like this, but really, I mean, scientifically based figures. Fantastic. Okay, well on that note, I want to say thank you all for joining us, um, including the people in the room. I'm not sure if there's any questions, you've got any, we can have a cat. We're fortunate we can have a coffee and croissant afterwards. I want to say thank you very, very much, Thomas, for joining us. Really, you, really Christian. insightful presentation. Great to know the work that you're doing. I'm thrilled to hear that it's open to all. And for the sport workers, um, like myself, this is a great opportunity to, to further advance and, and, and develop our skills. So I think it's uh, wonderful news. Uh, I'm looking forward to, 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 to really exploring the courses because I too am very curious. So thank, thank you for Christian. joining us. Great thank to you. have you here. 
Thank you again Thank for you. all the um, your patience as we as we as we as I stumbled with a little bit of technology today, um, but we, we we got there in the end. So. As always, thank you for joining us. Um, look forward to catching up with you all again very soon. Have a great day and stay safe. Thank you all. Thanks.